So I had the a7 IV for around three days and I gotta say this camera is one of the most amazing camera I have ever used. We're using it right now and the auto tracking on this camera is amazing. I mean just tracks your eye perfectly well like there's no reason to like manual focus with this camera as long as you have an auto focusing lens. And even though this is a Sony camera, like it has like amazing image quality and color size. I mean, just look at how amazing this like camera looks like. Like I always want to get like a black magic camera just so I can have a camera that has, you know, that like beautiful cinematic look and colors. But like with this camera, I don't need that shit. I don't have to worry about, you know, manual focusing and everything. So I got an idea. What if I put the worst Sony lens on this camera and see how it performs. And we're gonna use the Sony 50mm 1.8 that we got right here. And this camera setup that I have right here, the right here, the this is the original Sony A7 camera with the 51.8 right here. You can see this is the setup. I made a video about this is a $350 setup that you can get right now. And here, let's track back on my face. And this this setup, you know, you can get some professional looking images with it, but the lens itself is very shitty, but it is the cheapest Sony lens you can get. This is a, uh, I believe I got this for $200 new. And if you, you know, you know, but if you look around like eBay and stuff, I'm sure you can get it for around like $100 used. So it's very cheap. And it's a 50 millimeter 1.8 prime. So it's a good price, but, but the autofocusing on this lens is extremely loud and just, is very slow so I'm curious to see how it performs with a camera like this that has like amazing autofocusing here let's turn this camera on right now just so you guys can hear what the what it sounds like here I'm gonna put it up to my microphone it just sounds like an old fax machine like <laughs> that that that's so ridiculous <laughs> but so first we're gonna do two tests we're gonna First, do a studio test right now, see how it looks. So I'm gonna take this lens out and I'm gonna swap it out with this lens I had right there. Right now we have the Sigma 35mm 1.4 lens as the native version, it's not adapted. And let's swap it out with this and let's see how it looks. All right, now we got the 50mm 1.8 on and wow, actually looks Pretty damn good, look at that, it's like tracking my face like perfectly fine. What? And, and, and the weird thing is that it's not making any noises, what? Maybe it is making noises, but I'm not hearing it from here and I'm not that far away from it. What the heck? Dude, this camera is literally magic. Now, first of all, you might see that the contrast went up in the video, and that's because with the Sigma lens that I have here, I was using, um. I was using a Pro Mist filter on here, so that's probably why it looks more contrasty. But wow, dude, the tracking seems to look work very well. Okay, let's try to track this camera right here. Let's bring it over here. Yeah, it's doing a great job just tracking it. And how does it go back to my face? Wow, this might actually be a good studio lens. Look at that. And things that you don't, the things that, okay, here's the thing about this lens. When you're shooting at f1.8, it's pretty soft and you get a lot of more red and purple fringes because it's just a cheap lens, you know. So you're not gonna get the best image quality when it's opened all the way up. But if you stop it down to like f2.8, the image quality is actually pretty decent on it. So it's not the worst lens, but the reason I, I never liked using it is because it just had a lot of problems with autofocusing. And I actually tried shooting a video with the a7R3 with this lens. And the whole video was ruined because the autofocus was just like going back and forth for some reason. As if I was using contrast space autofocus, but like, dude, this is working perfectly fine. Okay, so now let's try going outside. Hopefully it's not raining. I think it's fine now because it was raining earlier, but it, it doesn't matter. You guys don't care about the weather right now. But we're gonna go outside. I'm gonna do some tracking tests, see how it looks. Okay, now we're gonna be doing an autofocusing test on the camera. We do have it set to f1.8. The shutter speed is at one five thousandth of a second. Oh my god. I just don't care, honestly. But here's how it's tracking me. We do have it. Wait, let me see actually what I have the speed set to. So I have the speed set to seven, which is the fastest autofocusing speed, which is what I want, just so we can see how fast the camera is tracking me. Oh god, I don't even know if I'm in the frame still. Here, let's open up the app. 
And if you don't know about the app, about like how I'm doing like all the, the tracking and everything, definitely download the app. Check out my last video about this app because the app is like such an amazing tool on the a7 IV, which it was not with the other cameras. Other cameras, you could just like monitor it. But with this camera, you can do some crazy stuff. But I can see that it's tracking me right now. It's tracking the back of my head. Right there. Right there. I'm right over here. And I think it's tracking my boats right now. Which is, I don't want that. I want to track me. So it did lose me a little bit, but that's more on the camera. <clears throat> okay, let me come really fast to the camera. Oh my God, I think it's keeping me in track the entire time. That's so insane. Holy shit. Oh my God. So with a $200 lens, this is what you can do with this camera. Of course, the camera itself is expensive, but like, Jesus Christ, dude, this is insane. So I'm gonna bring in another camera and we're gonna see how the photography side of things work with this camera. Cause right now, I mean, it's killing the video side. So let's we'll switch cameras now and then I'll show you guys how it works. All right, prepare for the autofocus to go to shit cause we are shooting with the Sony FS5 right now. But we have the camera right here. So we're gonna do some test shots to see how it performs here. We're gonna take a picture of the camera right here. And I can tell already by just looking at this, you know, you can just see like all the po the green and the purple fringe, which is my main problem with this lens. You can just tell easily that it's a cheap lens, but to be honest, if you're, you know, just a consumer and you don't know much about photography, are you gonna notice? I don't know, but we're gonna do a lot of tests. We're gonna take some pictures around my backyard. I already use this lens professionally multiple times and shoot at f1.8. The image quality is just below my standards, so I end up never using it that much. But let's see how the autofocus performs on the a7 IV. So one thing that I immediately noticed using this lens on the a7 IV is that you don't get a lot of noise with the, the autofocus. And like, if you listen to it right here, like, it's almost silent. You can hear it, but I think it's just because the autofocus thing is so fast on this camera is that it just instantly autofocuses, so you don't really get to hear like the lens wiring and making noises like a fax machine. So that is pretty crazy with this lens. So if you have a fast focusing camera, it kind of makes up for like all the lens noise of it's haunting and like trying to find focus. So that's pretty crazy. So uh, we're gonna take some pictures just to show you guys the problem with the lens, but the autofocus problem seems to be fixed now because the autofocus is really fast with this with this camera, it's it's pretty crazy what newer technology can do. All right, so I picked a couple of images to show you guys the problems and the strengths of this lens. And pretty much the only strength is that it's a cheap 1.8 lens, but the image quality is, it's, it's not my favorite. So if we look at this image right here, it looks fine right there, but like when you zoom into it, like, you can see all this like green and purple fringe to the image. You know, you can see it like over here, pretty much any area where there's contrast. It kind of, in my opinion, ruins the image. Now, to the average eye, would anyone notice this or even care? I, I don't know. But I think it does kind of ruin the image because, you know, with the 1.8, you get a lot of bokeh in the image. But bokeh also has contrast to it. So if you have a cheap lens like this, where it's producing a lot of purple fringing and moray, then what's gonna cause is that it's just gonna make the bokeh look kind of disgusting. <laughs> and here's another image to show you like what the big difference between like a cheaper and an expensive lens is, is that here, this image I shot with at f4, and as you can see, the pole is like perfectly sharp, right? So if we go down to the next image, which is at f2.8, you see that the image starts to soften up and when you go down to 1.8 it's like like is this picture even in focus you know there's a huge difference between the f4 image you know like the contrast the sharpness you get between that and the 1.8 that doesn't even look like it's in focus you know here's a picture of my stupid cat and when you focus in i mean i mean when, and when you zoom in you can just like you can't even tell with this lens if the image is in focus or not, you know? So, I mean, but the thing is that if you're just a beginner and you just want a nice fast lens just to create some bokeh and just to like have fun with it, it makes a great lens, you know? 
Well, as a professional tool, would you could you get away with using it in a professional setting if you're doing video or photo? Probably. I mean, probably most people wouldn't care, especially if you're shooting in a studio and you're shooting at, you know, F, F8 or something with strobes, then it doesn't really matter. But if you're trying to shoot wide open, the image quality just isn't the best. But to the normal eye, people might not even notice it. But just as a professional, you know, you can tell that this is a cheap lens with just how much more and purple fringing and like how soft, soft the image is is at f1.8 but the thing is that you can use this lens as a f2.8 lens so if we go to a 2.8 you can see a lot of the purple fringe and the green go away and if you go to f4 most of it is pretty much gone that's one of the most interesting things about the sony 50 1.8 lenses because there's like so many different 50 millimeter lenses and there's also like 40 millimeter and like 55 millimeter lenses and from what i've seen most people li love the zeiss 55 1.8 lens but personally i just can't bring myself to spend a thousand dollars on a 1.8 prime lens you know especially a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens because those are usually you know like 100 200 dollars so Personally, that lens I never really want to get just because of the price point. And then it's like, if you want to get the 1.4 version, it's like $1,500. But it's like, if you're spending that much money, you might as well get the 1.2 version, which is $2,000. So that's probably the lens I'm going to save up to and buy because that, that lens is just amazing. We'll see how things start out in 2022 if I don't become homeless. We'll see. I might actually pick it up. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to comment down in the section below what do you think about the video and if you have any questions or anything about the a7 IV, let me know in the comment section. I'll give you a shout out in the next video that if I ever use your comment because I'm trying to make videos for the a7 IV every single day as I find out more stuff about this camera and I want to keep you guys informed about this camera so you guys can learn much as possible about this camera if you're about if you're thinking about buying it or not. But anyways, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.